devotional service or very um, attached to following rules and regulations. And often we see the way they follow um, the rules and regulations. It's kind of like very rigid and and and, and no flexibility. And and sometimes um, the, the, they'll follow the rules and regulations at the expense of the relationship of their relationships with other devotees. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's a bit of a catch-22 sometimes with deity worship because you want devotees who are, who are, who are strict pajaris, you want devotees who, who are very uh, regulated, but at the same time, uh, it's important that devotees are um, a little bit sensitive to the needs of others, if you like. It's, it's interesting because yesterday we had Chaitanya Charan here. I don't know if he comes to Europe at all. But um, he, he was he, he was doing doing the Sunday feast class, and the topic he spoke was was about speech. And it was really interesting. He's seventeenth chapter of the Gita quite a bit, and one of the points he was making was that speech. He he was saying speech has three aspects. One is is uh, the powerful, you know, the power of speech, and as as we know, speech can be very very powerful just by saying, you know. You know, just how you say something to someone can either encourage them or it can really discourage them. It can actually, you know, in, you know, damage people. You know, um, um, you know, also if we're not very, very careful of speech. And so he talked about the power of speech, about the process of speech, and he gave two key points in terms of the process: is that speech needs to be. Um, what was the word he used? Um, Oh, I, f- I forgot it yesterday too. I was talking about this. It was a really interesting class he gave. Speech needs to be, um, you know, like it, it needs to be correct. You know, you need to be saying the right thing, and then also it needs to be sensitive. And of course, speech also has its purpose, and obviously, the purpose of our speech should be to elevate, to improve. So, it, it, and we find that that what happens sometimes is, is like devotees, what they're saying is correct. But the way they say it, they're not sensitive to the needs of others, or or maybe they're saying, you know, the, you know especially as head pajaris, you might be cor- you, need, you might need to correct devotees, but you're correcting sometimes two, three, four, five times a, a day, you know, and, and it, it gets a little bit too much for some devotees. So, you know, it's, it can be quite uh, difficult uh, in, in the service of head pajari. To to develop these uh, loving relationships with devotees. So yeah, what what would be nice to do now is just is just go into some breakout groups, um, and and hopefully Hansa Avatar is ready for this, and just discuss ways of serving Krishna's devotees that ultimately will lead to the pleasure of Krishna. And obviously, it must be related around deity worship, not not just um, you know other aspects. Um, I, I can give one example just to give you an idea. Our head Pajari here, he's quite expert at, at, um, uh, at doing this. I was I was head Pajari previously, but I don't think I did such a good job as he's doing. Uh, during the pandemic, what he was doing is because a lot of devotees couldn't, could, you know, we have a large, like on the farm, there's about 70 devotees living here, and in the broader community, is about 800 devotees. And many of those devotees were, uh, have been engaged in deity worship. So during the pandemic, they couldn't come and do deity worship. So he wanted to keep them connected to the deities. So what he would do is, is he was cooking extra milk sweets for the deities and he'd go and visit the devotees and give them milk sweets. It's just a simple thing. But, you know, it, it's really, um, it's really uh, endeared those devotees to to the to the temple, to the deity department, and, and to him as the head pajari. So just, you know, just an idea, anyhow. All right, so Hunks Avatar, would you like to uh, move the devotees into the breakout rooms, please? So that that sort of exercise was really just for you to churn the concept a bit more and hopefully to develop awareness of, of how important it is to uh, you know, please Krishna's devotees. And you know, those those two wonderful quotes that Yadunandan Maharaj read out before. Uh, I, I thought were really, uh, you, know, you know, quite relevant to this point, but also quite inspirational. And 
really, I mean, at least my realization of, of what the role of the head pujari is, is not so much to be in charge, but really to facilitate the service of others. And and the word facilitate has a really interesting meaning, and, and it actually means to make easy. So the idea of, of being a head pujari is to make it easy for others to serve the deities. And, and you know, um, you know, I was listening to some of the conversations, and 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 you know, these points were coming up in the different groups. I think it's very, very important that we um, inspire others to serve Krishna, because you know we understand that by serving the deity, that we become purified. Ultimately, our our um, our, our, our love for Krishna awakens, and and ultimately will will return back to the spiritual realm. So, yeah, very, very. Interesting. So now what, what we've got is, is two devotees from our core team. We've got Radha Takarani and Mahat Sevakabu. They're from Iskon Didi Worship Ministries core team. The core team is, is essentially just um, a group of devotees. We meet every week and uh, we discuss, you know, how to uh, move forward with Iskon Didi Worship Ministry. And actually, you know, just a few weeks ago, we were discussing. Uh, this sangha and, and the topics for the sangha and 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 speakers we we would ask and you know stuff like that. So you know all all the decisions basically the decision decision making in the Iskon Didi worship ministry is done with this group of devotees. So yeah, Radha Takarani and Mahat Sevak are going to do a presentation for you. Okay, so I'll hand it over to you. You're, you're going first, Radha Takarani. Yes. Hey, Krishna, dear Ashina Kawasha Prabhu, thank you for that introduction. Hey, Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my most humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Mahat um, Sivika Prabhu and I will be sharing this next 30 minutes. Um, I'll be using the first half to go through a refresher on the disaster recovery uh, template. I'm sure many of you may have seen this previously. So we're just going to go through it uh, briefly again, um, just to remind everyone. Um, about the points, um, and for those who haven't seen it, to get them to get to be more familiar with the principles that we're trying to imbibe around um, taking care of the deity during our disasters. And then um, Mahat Sevaka Prabhu will speak in the second 15 minutes. Um, so I'll just share my screen. Um, and for those of you that may have seen the presentation, uh, please bear with me and Feel free to ask any questions along the way. I am presenting from work, so please excuse me. I don't have my tilak on um, and traditional attire. So, sorry, let's start from the beginning. So, um, as mentioned, this is just a brief refresher uh, to remind everybody again of what we're trying to achieve with this specific document that has since been published. Um, the uh, agenda to quickly follow will just give some background around why we've put this a specific paper together, what is uh, disaster recovery trying to uh, achieve. Um, there's a template, a toolkit to help um, Pujari's senior temple management um, to manage this better, and then we'll take any questions at the end. So uh, to start off with, there's a beautiful story from uh, Chaitanya Charm, Rith Madhya, um, chapter four, verses 21 to 43. Um, and Madhavendra Puri was in the forest um, meditating and in, in prayer. Um, and there was a beautiful exchange between him and, um, well, the Supreme Personality who guided him to a form of, uh, of the deity um, that was hidden in the bushes. Um, and the um, the, the deity was Gopala, and he had said that when um, the area was attacked, uh, the priests that were serving um, the, the deity form had to hide him in the jungle. Um, and over this period, the deity had to suffer great uh, difficulties, cold, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, and instructed Madhavendra Puri to take him out and have him installed. So even as you know, as recent as 500 years ago, the deities were subjected to all sorts of dangers and continue to be so, as we've seen. So here in Kali Yuga, there's all sorts of calamities. They could be natural or otherwise. 
And so we, with an IDWM, have uh, you know experienced some of this recently, and we put together a document that principally manages this. Um, so the, the template, the document is available on the website and also via email. And we are uh, you know, available um, to just chat to if you need support on this. What's, uh, what are the recent experiences that we've had? Well, in Bangladesh, um, there were a, a lot of riots, social upres, unrest. Um, and there we saw, unfortunately, the Shira Prabhupada deity had been burnt. Um, and then, of course, uh, recently with the war in Europe, some of the deities had to be taken off site. Um, there were natural disasters like floods uh, in South Africa, and this resulted in the infrastructure being so badly um, inaccessible that basic necessities could not be taken to the deities. So there's all types of disasters. We've categorized them into either socio-political, geopolitical, climate uh, change, uh, socioeconomic uh, conditions where you see a lot of inflation and food cannot be afforded. And then, of course, natural disasters as well. So what do we um, do to manage this? Well, effectively, what we're trying to achieve is to get as many pujaris uh, into the right mindset before the disaster happens. So if in your mind you're able to um, walk through what a disaster would entail, then when it actually happens, you're a lot more prepared. Um, so this is what the document tries to do. It tries to pre-stimulate uh, an environment where the deities are really under danger and what could possibly happen. Food shortages, power shortages, a lack of communication. Uh, because when a disaster does actually happen, it's very difficult for uh, a person in charge to at that point decide what to do. But if there's some planning done beforehand, it makes it uh, much easier um, uh, to, to manage. So because there's so many uh, possible outcomes and scenarios, um, the template through a process of elimination helps the user identify which disasters are most relevant to their yatra or temple or center, um, and then the frequency of, of when that could happen. Um, so, so that helps a lot. Of course, if there is time, um, ongoing review and discussion about disasters or the template is always optimal. Um, so uh, the template, uh, basically uh, the document, you know, has some guidance. It, it speaks about who should be the uh, stakeholders that are, um, sorry, let me just put the pointer options on here. Who are the stakeholders that should be identified within a yatra? It may not only be the pajaris, it may also involve maybe temple management, other senior devotees, or other critical members um, that can uh, facilitate uh, during a disaster. And then of course it gives guidelines around how the template should be completed and how often it should be reviewed. Uh, the, the, the template is, is broken up into a few sections. The first section, as I mentioned, through a process of elimination helps identify whether you're prone to floods, fire, economic stress, social, political uh, tension, et cetera. And then the second uh, section, which is probably the most relevant, uh, is what should you do in a disaster? Now, irrespective of the type of disaster that happens, it doesn't matter what disaster happens, it generally comes down to about five or six categories that is most important in serving the deities. Is there enough food? Is there enough water? Do we, is there power? Um, is there uh, a need to safeguard the deities and either hide them on site or remove them off site? And how does the communication work, uh, especially if you know um, some of the power is uh, interrupted or the telecom lines are down? So the template seeks to provide guidance principally around that. And that for me, is th these two sections are probably the most important in the document and the template. So I'll just switch over to the, um, to the uh, document itself. Um, can everybody see uh, a new presentation, uh, 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 a document? Yes. Okay, great. Hare Krishna. So uh, the top half of the document I summarized in the slides. Um, and then the actual uh, template um, starts uh, midway through the document from about page six onwards. 
Um, and there's a little guidance around how to complete the template. So you could answer for the different questions, yes or no. Uh, what is the uh, grading of the risk? If it's high risk, it's probably, you know, 70, 75 to 100% chance of materializing. Medium is 50 to 74%, low risk, less than 50%. So just some broad, you know, guidelines. Um, and then how uh, frequent could the disaster happen? So less than a week's time, less than a month's time, less than a three months time. This is important, especially if there's a lot of tension or possible disasters that could affect the deities. So let's get into the template. The templates, um, the first section is just helping all the Pujaris understand what could go wrong specifically to their country, their city, their area. So this is a process of elimination. Uh, all the different types of disasters are categorized and then subcategorized on your left-hand side. So natural disasters such as flooding, wildfires, earthquakes, etc., geopolitical scenarios such as civil protests, war invasion, terror attacks, etc. And there's another page with the with the rest of disasters. But essentially, you want to check whether it's a yes or no. So is it applicable or not? Is it a yes or is it a no? If you answered yes in the first um, set of blocks, then you would probably want to ask yourself, okay, yes, we do have floods and we do have wildfires, but how risky is it? And in some cases, maybe flooding is very high risk, but wildfires, it has happened, but it's probably low risk. So then in your mind, you start to get a picture of, okay, these are the disasters and this is the, the main areas, the high risk that I need to focus on. Um, and then what is the possibility of it happening? Well, actually floods only happen once a year uh, over April, May, a high flood season in certain countries so that's when I need to worry in other areas flooding has been happening quite often so we've experienced lots of floods every three to six months um, and then once you've done that you've now got a picture of what could go wrong and then we move on to the principles of of recovery planning so as mentioned it doesn't matter what the disaster is you now have an idea of what could go wrong and, and when uh, it could go wrong for your specific uh, temple or center in a country. Um, we have provided some guidance um, around what to do if there's water shortages. So to plan in advance is key. If you know you're going to have a disaster, try and keep some water on hand. Um, you know, speak to uh, individuals to have uh, storage containers, etc. If there's going to be power shortages, make sure you have enough gas or wood on hand, uh, backup solutions, generators, etc. So the deities can continue to be served until everything goes back to normal. Food shortages, uh, if there is going to be some sort of uh, problems, perhaps get some advanced uh, food supplies and keep it on hand. If you have a uh, uh, Pujari staying in the temple. This is also in very important, not only to have food for the deities, but also for the temple residents. Um, and then just to quickly close off, what is very important is if the deities need to be hidden or to be taken off site, there are some guidelines around this, and I'm not going to get into the detail. You can read the document itself. Uh, the deities need to be kept safe. Uh, a room could be earmarked in advance where the deities could be hidden. Um, and you know, uh, effectively, how do, how do we keep the deity safe from being um, like in Bangladesh burnt, for example? And if you need to move the deities off site, uh, there's some you know sensitivities that we need to keep on in mind. We don't want the deities to get damaged, um, etc. So um, there are some guidance just to make sure that um, you have some uh, perhaps storage containers a person who can drive the DST so safely, a route, for example, et cetera. Um, so these are the principles and I'll leave it at that. Uh, again, oh, just the last thing is, you know, during a disaster, it's very difficult to communicate sometimes. So uh, it's important that um, you have a good relationship with the municipality, with your, uh, with the police, with individuals uh, that can actually help your your temple uh, center, um, and 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 uh, getting the inmates out of sight or the uh, the deities. And uh, just the last thing is make sure that you have somewhere written all the contact details of key people, like the police, um, the temple president, and, and, and any other key stakeholders. And I will leave it at that. Um, 
Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you, Radha Chakarani. Very, very important presentation. And uh, you know, I'm just hoping devotees can, you know, spend a little bit of time going through these documents, because as we're seeing, the material world is a dangerous place, um, and it's, it's 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 not getting any better. You know, it's like here here in Australia, for instance, that there's um one of the states in this in the south of Australia, um, the, the, on the, on the east coast, they just had fires like about a month ago, like really, really major fires where there's, you know, massive damage and loss of life and stuff like that. And now they're experiencing floods. Like a month later, the place is flooding, you know, and, and, and this is Kali Yuga. It's just going to get more and more like this. You know, there's a war going on in Ukraine. Now there's a war being just being declared in, in um, Israel. And there was, you know, on, on Saturday or Sunday, there was a massive earthquake in, in Afghanistan. So it's real. You know, this this is just the nature of this age is 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 just calamity at every step. So, you know, I think as as the the caretakers of the deities, it's our responsibility to ensure that we have a plan. What will we do if disaster strikes? How will we first protect the Lord, and then secondly, how will we ensure the service keeps going on? You know, so and, and also you know, we we also need to protect the devotees and see that they're able to maintain themselves. So. I, I encourage you all to take this very seriously and, and try to work out a disaster plan, uh, a disaster recovery plan for your temple. Okay. Anything else from your side, Radha Takarani? Thank you so much again. Thank a, you, any quick questions for Radha Takarani? At all? And where, where can they get the documents from, Radha Takarani? Um, yes, I'll share the presentation with Channel Priya. There is a uh, there is a link there um, a, a, on the last slide. It's uploaded on our website, but we can circulate mm -hmm. it again um, via email. Hare Krishna. I will arrange that. Thank you, Radha Takarani. Really appreciate it.